It's a rainy night in the middle of the countryside and a young man known as El Chino is being chased by a mysterious person that keeps demanding information. This person catches up with him and starts beating him up, but El Chino insists he doesn't know anything before he's knocked out. When he wakes up minutes later, the mysterious person is throwing him into a pit and burying him alive. Sometime later in the city, police officer Martin says goodbye to his family before going to work. He's recently been transferred to another precinct and this is his first day on the new job. As soon as he arrives though, they give him a very important task, prisoner transfer with fellow officer Montesinos. The trip will be done at night and they'll have to cross the countryside to make a shorter time and not suffer the freezing cold more than necessary. The reason why this is done so late is for discretion and safety, this is also why the cops aren't allowed to keep their phones and the prisoners aren't told about the transfer until a few hours before they're picked up. When Martin and Montesinos arrive at the prison, they're informed they'll be relocating six prisoners. Most of them are guilty of small crimes, but Romanian criminal Mihai is part of an international trafficking network, and Pardo is a former politician. The other four are Golem, Ray, Nano, and lastly Ramus, who has a special lockpick hidden in his cell and intends to bring it with him. All six prisoners are taken to a room where Montesinos inspects their bodies to be sure they aren't hiding anything, and Martin takes anything they may have on them, like jewelry or books, and puts them in their bags with the rest of their stuff. During the inspection, Nano has the nerve to insult Montesinos, which makes him angry and aggressive. The cop intends to punish Nano for his transgression, but Martin quickly stops him before things escalate. Afterward, the prisoners are taken to the armored truck, which has a cell for each of them. Most of them have their handcuffs removed except for Mihai and Ramus, whom Montesinos is very wary of. Before leaving, Montesinos also has a talk with Martin, asking him to be less of a stickler for the rules, but Martin refuses because rules are the only way to maintain order. For the duration of the trip, Martin will be the one driving the truck while Montesinos travels in the back with the prisoners. There's a camera in that area that tells Martin what's going on back there, and of course both officers have their walkie-talkies. Ahead of them, a police car with two more officers escorts the truck. Near the woods area, the mysterious person knows the cops are coming, so he puts a spike strip in the middle of the road to stop them. Meanwhile in the truck, the prisoners begin arguing over politics and their crimes, so Montesinos asks Martin to turn up the heat as they requested, hoping that will help them sleep. As the mysterious person drives past them and gets ahead, Ramus asks permission to go to the toilet, so Montesinos takes him there and temporarily removes his handcuffs. This allows Ramus to recover his lockpicking tools, which he had hidden in his rear. The further they go into the woods road, the thicker the fog becomes, and Martin loses sight of the police car. The officers don't answer their walkie-talkies either, and right as Martin begins wondering what's going on, the truck reaches the spike strip, being forced to stop. The prisoners begin theorizing about what happened, thinking this may be Mihai's powerful friends coming to the rescue. Martin can see the police car among the trees, but the officers still won't answer, so Montesinos decides to come out to investigate. Once he's gone, Mihai clarifies this isn't his people, and Ramus begins working on unlocking his handcuffs and the door with his tools while he discusses with the others a possible escape plan. A few moments pass and Montesinos doesn't answer his walkie-talkie either, causing Martin to decide to come out to investigate too. With his gun out, he walks down the road and finds an unconscious Montesinos on the ground. At that moment, the mysterious person begins shooting at him from his hiding spot among the trees, so Martin takes Montesinos keys and runs to take cover next to the police car. The car is on its side, both officers are dead, and when a stray bullet hits the hood, it leaves Martin deaf and disoriented for a few minutes. He tries to shoot back but it only ends with Martin wasting all his bullets, so he runs back to the truck, giving the mysterious person the chance to hit him on his thigh. Martin enters the truck cabin and tries to contact headquarters to no avail. The truck won't start either, and seeing as the shots are now damaging the glass, it's just a matter of time before a bullet reaches him. Seeing as he has no other choice if he wants to survive, Martin runs to the back of the truck and locks the door behind him before rushing to the first aid kit to take care of his wound. The prisoners want to know what's happening, but Martin refuses to tell them, and he gets distracted when he notices on the cameras that the mysterious person is entering the cabin. This is the perfect chance for Ramus to come out of his cell and jump on Martin, starting a fight. Things are pretty equal between them until Martin realizes the prisoners don't know he's out of bullets, so he takes out his gun and threatens Ramus with it to make him stop. Ramus swears he doesn't know who the person outside is, but before they can discuss things further, Pardo and Ray notice something strange in their cells, someone is pouring gas inside to then start a fire. Since this is an emergency, Martin opens their cells to help. He uses the fire extinguisher on Pardo but it's too late for him, he's already dead. Ramus helps Ray, whose only body part on fire is his leg. Once they put it out, together they free the rest of the prisoners, and the group approaches Martin who is only managing to keep them back thanks to his gun. The tense moment is interrupted when Martin's walkie-talkie comes to life with the mysterious person's voice explaining a few things. He says the only key that will open the back door of the truck is in Martin's possession, 
and that he only wants them to open the door, not caring about what they'll do afterward. Before hanging up, he also mentions Martin is out of bullets. Martin tries to tell the prisoners that they can't trust this guy, but it's pointless, the group jumps on him to try to take the key. As he defends himself, Martin drops the key on the floor and runs towards the other end of the truck to keep the prisoners' attention on him. However, Mihai and Nano see the keys fall and Mihai gets to them first, causing Nano to pick up the fire extinguisher and beat him to death with it after stealing the keys from him. The rest of the group comes to calm him down and ask for the keys, and their argument is interrupted when the walkie-talkie comes to life again. The mysterious guy knows Nano by name and reveals he only wants him, so the others can leave if they turn Nano to him. Before hanging up this time, he also tells them not to believe Nano because he's a liar. Nano proceeds to explain the voice is Miguel, a former corrupt cop that is accusing him of something he didn't do. The other prisoners don't care though, they just want to escape, and when Miguel speaks again through the walkie-talkie, it's to mention he's killed El Chino. Hearing that his friend is dead and seeing as the others want to turn him in, Nano goes crazy and another fight begins, which ends with Nano swallowing the key so nobody can take him to Miguel. While Martin is knocked up by the prisoners, Miguel changes the tires of the truck before going back to his car to have a warm drink and pick up some tools. Back to the truck, Martin wakes up to discover he's been locked up with Nano by using a handcuff on the door, the two dead bodies are being put inside their cells, and Miguel has used his tools to shut down the heater and the lights, so they're left with only the emergency bulbs and a freezing chill. As the prisoners open the storage compartment to get their bags back, Miguel hotwires the truck and begins driving away. He also opens communications again through the walkie-talkie, so Ramos tries to negotiate, explaining what happened to the key. However, Miguel forbids them to kill and open Nano to recover the key because he needs him alive, so the prisoners will have to find some other way to escape. Tired of this, Nano tears off the security camera's wires, then swears to Martin that he didn't do anything, he's just scared. He also starts crying as he explains El Chino was like a brother to him. Ramos finds some tools inside a drawer and thinks maybe they could use them to escape, so Ray accepts to enter the narrow storage compartment to see what he can find. Back on the road, Montesinos is waking up. He's been shot in the leg and stomach so he's bled a lot, but he's still alive. As he investigates the area and finds the dead officers, he uses his walkie-talkie to try to contact headquarters and ask for help. He doesn't get an answer, but he does find Miguel's car, which has so interesting things inside. Lots of colorful stickers, a gun, pictures of Miguel's family and a newspaper clip that says they still can't find the body of Miguel's daughter. In the truck, Ray uses the tools to try to open a lid in the storage compartment while Ramos teases Martin for his bad memory. It turns out they've seen each other before because Ramos was the one that sang at Martin's wedding. Suddenly, the truck begins going faster, it's because of Montesinos, who has shown up in Miguel's car and is trying to shoot him. Miguel tries to push the car off the road with the truck, so Montesinos speeds up to drive ahead of him, intending to get him to stop. However, Miguel responds by going even faster and hitting him from behind, making the car hit a tree and killing Montesinos for good this time. The truck comes to a sudden stop when Miguel hits the brakes, causing Ray to be pushed forward and hit his head against a screw, instantly dying as well. Miguel comes gets off the truck to check if Montesinos is really dead before reloading his rifle while he considers his next move. Then, he goes back to the truck and begins driving again, opting for his most desperate plan yet. Ramos tries to talk to him through the walkie-talkie and at first, Miguel ignores him, but eventually he gives in and responds by saying the sun is raising, so this is Nano's last chance to confess. Nano still claims not to know what he's talking about, so Miguel hangs up, ignoring Martin's questions. A few moments later, they arrive at a frozen lake. Miguel stops the truck in the middle of it and shoots a few holes around the vehicle before walking away to wait for the inevitable. The ice cracks and breaks, causing the truck to slowly begin sinking. Water starts flooding the inside of the truck, so Martin plays his last card. He confesses there's an emergency exit, he only didn't mention it before because he thought they were safer inside the truck. He'll tell them the location if they free him, so Ramos takes out his lockpick to work on the handcuffs. A sudden movement from the truck makes him drop the tool in the water, so Golem volunteers to swim down and recover it. As the truck keeps shaking, Golem manages to grab the lockpick and bring it back to Ramos, but sadly, his sick body doesn't survive the trip and he dies as soon as he resurfaces. Ramos manages to free the others right before the truck finally sinks and Martin points at the fake panel that hides the emergency exit. Nano wastes no time and escapes, but Ramos is clinging to Golem's body, so Martin must drag him out with him before he drowns. It's easy for Nano to reach the surface and he immediately runs away, unaware that Miguel has seen him and is going after him. Ramos also comes out easily, but Martin is having trouble climbing onto the ice, luckily for him, Ramos returns the favor and drags him out of the water before giving him CPR. Such an act of kindness inspires Martin not to try to arrest Ramos, instead, he wishes him luck and shakes his hand. Afterward, Martin follows the sound of a rifle being fired to find an abandoned building. There, he sees Miguel at a window shooting at Nano, who is hiding behind a wall. 
Martin enters the room Miguel is in and asks him to surrender, which prompts Miguel to admit he will do so after he achieves justice. The truth is that months ago, during a festival, Nano and El Chino slipped some alcohol into Miguel's 13-year-old daughter's drink. Then they took advantage of her intoxicated mind, and once they were done with the abuse, they tortured her too, using pliers and a glass bottle. She was still alive when they tied her to a car they stole that same night to drag her through the ground for hours, and yet, the police still hasn't found the body, only Nano knows where it is. The investigation was pointless too, because there wasn't enough proof to send the boys to jail, which has taught Miguel that the legal system doesn't work. The reason why he knows all the details is that El Chino confessed everything before Miguel killed him. Now, he only wants to know where the body is so he can take it to his hometown and give it a proper burial. Nano notices Miguel is distracted so he tries to run away, causing Miguel to shoot and hit him on the leg. The rifle quickly runs out of bullets though, so while Miguel reloads, Martin takes the chance to jump on him to try to stop him. Both men begin beating each other up and Martin uses a glass shard he finds on the floor to stab Miguel's hand, giving him an opening to pick up the rifle. Miguel ignores him, running out of the room to follow the blood trail Nano has left behind, and Martin decides to go after them too after reloading his weapon. When Martin finds them, Miguel is trying to beat the information out of Nano, so Martin fires a warning shot. Miguel gets distracted, giving Nano the opportunity to push him off him, and now neither of them can move because they're on the other end of Martin's rifle. Suddenly, a helicopter appears above them, it's the police looking for them. Thinking he's safe now, Nano begins insulting and making fun of Miguel, saying he'll never tell him the location of the body. Seeing Nano's true colors makes something snap in Miguel, who shoots Nano on the foot and then his hand until he finally confesses where he hid the dead girl. As Miguel begins crying, more police officers show up and Martin surrenders. Many days later, a retired Martin stops by the police station to retrieve his belongings from his locker and sees another officer replace Montesino's name with a new recruit. Then Martin leaves the precinct, lost in thought about the workings of the system. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.